Joining us now is Ernie Ramos, the general manager with Mock Alert, and he's going to tell us about their advanced fire station alerting system that's being used across the United States and Canada, including in the city of San Francisco. Hi, Ernie. Welcome. Hey, good morning. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Give us a little bit of background about Mock Alert Inc. and your role with the company. Well, Mock Alert Inc. has been around for about uh, 30 years now. And uh, we've grown from uh, what we do is uh, we've grown from the SCADA market actually into the fire station alerting market. Uh, we've actually leveraged a lot of our skill sets, um, experience and so on that we've gained through SCADA and applied it in our fire market. So we have a, a team of system integrators. We have a team of programmers, engineers, and uh, actually a production facility as well, in, all in our Tampa facilities. So uh, we've uh, grown actually to become a uh, Motorola trusted partner for over 25 years too. Now, this is a very specialized uh, kind of system. How did you get involved in fire station alerting? Yeah, it's interesting because uh, we grew out of the, uh, the industry of SCADA. We leveraged what we know about radio communication, system integration, automation, and we took it and applied it to the fire station alerting market. And um, I mentioned earlier that we are a Motorola partner. Well, Motorola was in the middle of a project and uh, seemed to be in a somewhat of a conundrum. They could not get their product to work on a certain platform. Their radio network was having a little bit of a trouble. So they came to us as a trusted partner and realized that we had a similar product that actually uses the same hardware. And of course we knew the radio networks and we were able to get them over the hump on that particular project. And uh, in, in the process, they've learned that we actually can do a little bit more with our product, our fire station learning product than they have with theirs. So that at that point we established a partnership. They decided to not go forward with their product and actually utilize the mock alert fire station learning as their solution going forward. So um, that kind of leapfrogged us into this market. Well, that sounds like a great opportunity to jump into your presentation if you want to take over. All right. Yeah, so I, I wanted to share with you a little bit more about what we do today with uh, the fire station alerting. Uh, so today I'm going to show you how, and I'll speak a little bit about the parallels uh, of SCADA and fire station alerting and how the uh, Mockler team kind of leveraged that, that experience. So I'm going to show you a little bit here. We mentioned earlier that uh, Mock Alert uh, actually has the skills and the experience to work on the Motorola radio network. And as you know, in the SCADA industry, getting communication from uh, the field all the way at back to uh, one dispatch point, uh, accumulating that data and sending it back is uh, basically the principle of SCADA. Well, we utilized that and said, to, here we have the Motorola radio network where your primary dispatch there, that would be instead of your uh, typical SCADA dispatch or control room, it's our 911 center. Uh, that is the actual point where if you dial 911, that is the dispatcher that actually receives the call. In the uh, same dispatch area, we put a mock alert server and what we call the alerting interface controller. And that is an RTU in the SCADA world. We also refer to those in SCADA as a front end processor, but we uh, and Mock Alert reassigned it and called it an alerting interface controller. And then below that, you see what we call a computer aided dispatch. That's a software package that the 911 system uh, operators use in order to put in all the pertinent details once you dial 911. For example, they run that software and dial in structure fire address. TAC Channel 6, Rescue 7, Engine 5, the, all those pertinent details. Uh, so in that, uh, going back to the alerting interface controller, that uh, is a piece of uh, hardware that actually communicates over the radio network and as well, redundantly, over the IP network. Uh, that is crucial in the fire market to have levels of redundancy. Talking about redundancy, you can have a geo-redundant 911 center as well and you can have the same exact hardware there in case there's a uh, situation where the primary dispatch has to be evacuated, you have a secondary. And then of course you have your fire station. Um, in the fire station, 
the Mockler team puts in a control panel, the same ACE 3600 RTU remote terminal unit. We also put in there a voice radio and a data radio. A data radio is the wireless communication that communicates over the data radio data network. And the voice radio is actually where the dispatcher, when they key their voice, it's actually heard at the fire station. So you have your fire call, call 911, fire, what's your emergency? Dispatcher starts to type in all the address, details, and so on. Once they get the recommendations from CAD, Computer Aided Dispatch, it goes right to the Mokulit server, and as soon as they hit send, it goes over the IP network. At the same time, we send that over the radio network. And this is where mock alerts are a little different. We redundantly send it at the same time. We don't wait for one primary means of communication to fail before we flip over to the secondary. We, uh, every second counts in a fire situation. So once it gets to the fire station, whichever one gets there first gets processed. So off goes the, uh, the fire station, receives the alert, and has a heart saver ramped up tone. Uh, we ramp it up, and then we follow that by what we call text-to-speech. And text-to-speech is actually all the pertinent details that the dispatcher typed in uh, at the dispatch console, the address, engine, uh, cross streets, TAC channel. All of that gets converted to speech and broadcast out over the fire station's PA system. So the dispatcher, in this case, does not have to key their mic and actually speak over the PA system. At the same time, we uh, wake up all their TV screens and monitors all across the fire stations and display that same incident details. So what we call an incident display board. And then we have the uh, ability to send that also to the thermal printers and print that out as well. Uh, all of that uh, gets the information to the firefighters as soon as possible in many different forms. And then with the, of course, expanding on our automation from what we've learned from SCADA, where we have the ability to open the uh, fire station doors. And in this case, the fire station happens, this call happens to be fire. So we're going to go ahead and open those doors. And out comes the fire call. Out comes the rescue vehicle as well. So that is basically how an, uh, a 911 call starts and goes through the radio network as well as the IP network all the way to the fire station and sets off what we call all the bells and whistles at that end. And that took, a, took me about 10, 15 seconds to say, but once the dispatcher gets the information that it send, that information goes over to the fire station in less than a second on the IP network. So it's very quick and very efficient. So let me show you a little bit, uh, a high level, 50,000 foot view of what a mock alert can do. Over on the upper left-hand side, we talked about the dispatch center, or what we call PSAPs. And there on the uh, corner, you have your computer-aided dispatch. Well, most teams can, uh, most uh, fire station learning products can do uh, a CAD interface, as we call it, to the mock alert or to their server. Well, CAD takes it a step further. Uh, mock alert actually does uh, a few things with CAD we can handle up to 10 different CAD vendors at the same time. And we don't have to orchestrate them. They can operate differently and they can operate at their own time. We also have a nice API to the FSA server. And we also did some system integration again to the, what they call their radio consoles. So in this case, you're looking at it as an MCC 7100 or 7500 console with a mock alert GUI. Uh, so we've gone and taken a few steps away from the dispatcher and actually wrote APIs or leveraged our system integration skills from SCADA and actually do that through software. So now the dispatcher, instead of swinging, uh, taking all the calls and typing the, the details into CAD and then swinging their chair over to a secondary monitor keyboard and mouse for the radio console and then, sec and then swinging again over to what we would call the fire station learning dispatch console. Mock alert has married all those steps and uh, re relieved the dispatcher from doing all those uh, secondary and tertiary steps. So that's your dispatch center. 
in the center there, you have your network, your bubble. MacAlert sends that information over the IP network, also over the cellular out to, and I'll show you a bit about that, the MacAlert mobile app and tablets as well. And then it also sends it, of course, over the radio network. Because we can control that radio console, we can actually choose a radio resource, choose a radio channel, and then actually speak the text of speech and send it out to the fire apparatus or the portable radios outside of uh, quarters. So we can actually alert the fire station and all the fire personnel outside of quarters on their portable radios and their smartphone and tablets. And then over here on the right hand side, you see your fire station. We'll talk a little bit about that. We put a station controller panel and that's, that's uh, in the skater world, that would be your PLC out in the field. We tie that to their station's PA system. And then below it, you can see we, we've, uh, Mockler has taken a nice innovative stand on LED lighting. We put lighting in the fire stations. I'll show you a sample of that as well. And there's the TV screens and uh, turnout timer as we call them. And there's your thermal rip and run printers which are last man out by. So we have fully automated the process and eliminated uh, some of the steps from the dispatcher's perspective and send that information to more places uh, than uh, most of our competitors can do. So Mark Alert can do uh, a few things. We can send it from multiple PSACs to up to 127 different fire stations and we can do it with a level of security that uh, what we call information assurance compliancy. So it's, it will be locked down and secure. Let me show you a sample of what it looks like from a dispatcher's perspective. They would choose, here we have a screen that sits uh, right in front of the dispatcher. They can choose an emergency, in this case EMS. They choose the fire station. They have what the option of doing a text-to-speech there. Then they choose their send button. And then we give them a PA indicator and, and give them a time. Uh, you have 57 seconds now to speak if you choose to, or just let the text of speech do their thing. So once they hit the send, it goes out to the fire station. Building fire, residential, operations on TAC 2, ladder 7, quint 5, 1734 US, 27010. We wake up their TV screens. Um, here, if you're looking at an uh, HD monitor that has a fire call, It'll actually speak all the pertinent details in its text-to-speech there, as we call it. We'll use a Google Maps, and with that number 23, that's their turnout timer. And once the incident details are done, they can flip over and give them pertinent details. And in these days, uh, people are displaying COVID-19 updates. Uh, again, they can speak multiple languages, so you can hear it speak English, and then it can repeat it again in French. Bâtiment incendie, résidentiel, opération sur l'étac 2, échelle 7, 15-5, 1734 us, 27010. We also can light up their fire station. So in this case, the fire station was a medical call, so we chose blue. In this case, we're lighting up the bunk room in a blue light, and we also use that egress lighting out to the apparatus bay. And we could do that with uh, what we call zoning wall switch. So that blue bunk there in the fire station, if the medic actually switches out and the next following night, a fire guy or an engine guy sleeps there, they can choose the engine button. And we would only wake up, send alerts to that particular bunk room and only wake up that speaker if there's an engine call. So a nice uh, dynamic LED lighting system. We actually do this uh, automation and control. So we can change that traffic light to make sure it's green. We can turn off that stove in the firehouse to make sure that whole, the fire station doesn't burn down. And we can actually control bay doors and siren sites as well. So a little page here from the skater world. We have a uh, mock alert mobile app. So in case the firefighters are not in quarters, as they say, and they're out in the field, we, the dispatcher there can actually reach them over their smartphone and Android tablets. And some of them choose to put these tablets in their vehicles as well. And they utilize the map incident button to give them turn-by-turn -turn directions. So very nice uh, mobile app. Here's a sample of what it looks like once the mobile app actually uh, wakes up. You can see it's an EMS alert. 
we put a countdown timer, and there's that map incident button, the red bar, with the turn-by-turn -turn directions. And if they happen to be off-duty, they can actually look at the history of what's been happening in their fire station or their medical calls. A very user-friendly uh, platform, and it comes with every app, mock alert application, whether you buy the, the simple bare bones system or the fully loaded package, it always comes with the uh, mobile app as a free as part of the package. It can handle up to 10,000 tablets or phones. So if you're also outside of quarters, we have, we have implemented this uh, in San Francisco. And San Francisco came back to us years later and said, well, we like your package. We, we enjoy using it, but we want to hit the firefighters outside of quarters. Do you have something that we can reach them on their portable radios or their smartphones? So we're in the process of actually sending them what we call text-to-speech over the air. It goes over the radio consoles and actually hits their portable radios um, for their particular apparatus. It also, we also uh, sent them the mobile app as well. So San Francisco is in the middle of deploying their second phase of what we call the mock alert text-to-speech over the air. Here's a, cut, a little geographical map showing where we uh, deployed mock alert. You can see San Francisco here on the west coast. You can see Toronto with over 90 fire stations utilizing mock alert. And you can see our home base here in Florida. We have uh, quite a bit of dots there in Florida near our Tampa facilities. So we're always expanding and we're always looking to go further into Canada. But this gives you kind of a sample how many deployments we have, including military bases, Air Andrews Air Force Base, Shepherd Air Force Base, and Fresno Air National Guard, just to name a few. So mock alerts continue to grow. We also have uh, 158 deployments out in uh, Toronto and the Ontario region as well. So mock alert is uh, continuing to grow. We do a lot of system integration, and we enjoy using our SCADA industry experience in the fire station learning market. Thanks, Ernie. So uh, you covered a lot of ground there. Uh, now, keen-eyed VT SCADA users will notice that uh, you actually built this system on uh, VT SCADA by Trihedral. Can you tell us about some of the VT SCADA features that made it possible to do what you do in the system? Oh, yes. Uh, we actually can see that uh, we grew up in the SCADA industry, and we have actually had our experience with VT SCADA. We took not only our experience in uh, system integration and automation and controls, but we took the SCADA platform, the software platform, BT SCADA, with us to the fire market. It allowed us to do the user-friendly graphics that you saw on the presentation. It allowed us to use a lot of the uh, built-in features of reporting and the analytics that already come with BT SCADA. And we were able to um, leverage the fact that this is a mission-critical system. So the software that holds this platform has to be truly reliable, and we've learned to trust the VT SCADA throughout the years. Well, that's great. Uh, thank you so much. It's really exciting to see so many dots on the map. I knew that you had uh, covered a lot of cities, but that's, that's more than I thought, and it's always nice to see uh, Canadian dots on the map. Thanks for joining us, Ernie. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Well, thank you guys for having me.